morning. How is everybody? Good, good. I am so glad to be here. Um, I'm sorry the quote was long. It's a nice long quote, but you'll see where I'm coming from soon. All right. Um, you have to pardon me as I get set up. Um, you get two physics teachers in the same week. Isn't that something? All right. So you have a science framework. You have a, you know, you'll hear two different voices. I really appreciated Rob talking about, especially using the quote from Mr. Rogers, that, you know, you look at the people who help. You know, that's one of the things I, I appreciate by even looking at um, the, the, um, the, this, I'm sorry, the, the, the Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Because one of the aspects about this whole process, by the way, this obligatory picture of me and Miss Crystal when we were here 25 plus years ago, we were a little thinner. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Um, but one of the things about helping people is that that's what this is all about. We sometimes forget that the process of, of having our purpose of, of being a part of a team is that we need each other. This is a vital aspect of not just you know, what we're supposed to be doing, but it also is for joy. We don't have joy in, you know, if we're, if we're just walking down the street. You get real joy when you beat a team that you weren't supposed to beat. You get real joy when you, um, um, we're, 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 we're planning on something being, you know, not having something that you lost. You just lost your, your, your headphones, and then you find them. That's joy. You know what I'm saying? Especially their beats and stuff like that. You were looking for them all over the place. Um, that's one of the aspects, especially if somebody helps you find it. We need each other. And in that process, one thing I wanted to say is that I see you guys. I am overwhelmed by the privilege of, of having, you know, classes and, and um, different groups and clubs like you, you guys have it because it's just, it brings life and joy to me. Folks who went to Merrimack with me yesterday to go to the observatory, no, we had a good old fun time. And, um, you know, just being able to shoot the breeze with each other and to appreciate each other is part of this process. But today, you know, I want to talk about finding your voice. This is some of the things I wanted to share with you. You heard a little bit about my voice just regarding the whole science piece just a second ago knowing your wolves, and then finding your shepherds, those people that are going to help you. All right. So just to give you a little bit quick background about who I am, and yes, that is Mr. Nam, and that's my oldest son, Tylen, when he was that old. And um, um, so when I was here earlier, you know, we, you know we, I was able to, 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 to get to know a few people. I was able to be, have the back of certain people. He still gives me a hard time because um, I left him. I went to um, the college to, to work on my PhD after um, I left here, and he hadn't graduated yet, but you know, that's such his life. But who, about me, I grew up on the south side of Chicago on the other side of the tracks. Um, I went to a, so a solid public high school in Chicago, the same high school that Mae Jemison um, graduated. She was the first African-American female went to, to um, into space. I majored in physics undergrad, got married to Crystal, my beloved right over there. I was here for eight years. Um, as, you, as I mentioned, I'm always a certain teacher's advisor. Um, I, got, I have six sons, yes. Um, then I went, to, I went to seminary school, I was here, and then after I left, I got, went and got my PhD in education. I taught as a professor, then felt called to teach at my son's urban school, um, teaching preschool to eighth grade. I literally went from teaching graduate students in college to teaching pre-kindergarten students in about the same year. And it was a blessing, I really appreciated it. And it was a choice, because I really wanted to go back to the city and actually do what I, wanted, what I felt called to do. Um, I ended up running a school for 10 years, um, and I stretched, some of you guys I know feel stretched by some of the stuff we're doing in class, but I stretched K through 12th graders for those 10 years. Um, I had students memorizing digits of pi. I had one, I think ninth grader, memorized like 560 digits. His little brother in the first grade had 100 down, not bad. And so those are the kind of things that we tried to do, um, as well as giving people PSATs in the sixth grade. 
Uh, but the reason why we did that was because, to me, that's part of my voice. I felt like I wasn't challenged when I was growing up. I felt like it's important to challenge people, to give them the support they need, but to challenge them. All right, and so now you know I'm back here in my second stint, and this is my second year, and all of that. So again, what I want to talk about is your voice. Know your voice and, and find it. One of the things about high school is that this is where you find your voice, the things that are important to you, the people who are important to you, the things that make you laugh, the things that make you get angry. Those are the things that you're identifying in this time. And so as a result, I want to make sure you think about those things and the, and the wolves that will get in the way and the people that will support you in that. Now, I mentioned I, the quote, the long quote you heard was from a guy named Freeman Dyson. Some of you the people who know astronomy know he's the one who came up with the idea, the concept of the Dyson sphere, where you can control all the sun, the energy of a sun and things like that. Um, and so I, I mentioned that is that, you know, one of the problems I think we have as a country is that we often think in terms of labels. It's so easy to label people as this or that and to put them in the boxes. And it's so much easier for us to categorize people that way. And, our, and it's good, bad, or different. And so one of the challenges is that, you know, part of my thing about finding voice is to actually hear the voice of others and to respect where others come from. But an important aspect of my voice is that my faith and my, and my view of science, they aren't just something that is, you know, that are diametrically opposed to each other. They're complementary. And that's one of the things he talked about. But the other thing he mentioned was that the media rarely mentions this fact. So one of the issues is, especially in a small community like this, is that there's a lot of media around. People telling the people about this, I like this, I don't like this thing. You, you all know, you all know, you, you, you all know your own haters, you know certain teachers and things like that have haters. We have folks who love each, you know, certain people and things like that. But what got it, you know, what, what, the, the thing about this whole process is that you have to understand um, that you have to know your voice and commit to it and understand it's gonna grow, change, and all of that as well. So this is part of my voice, but also know that there's media around that's gonna be trying to put people in boxes and you have to resist that, all right? So what I was gonna talk about today is to find your voice and perfect it. Um, you know, I, I remember Caleb had asked me about how do I put those two things together and that's, I was able to start to answer that question but that's one of the things about it. You have to ask questions about what things are important to you, what things are not. Growth comes from improving how we do things, like asking questions, getting help, et cetera, et cetera. Singing a song. Like if you're trying to sing a song, you have to, you have to warm your voice up. That's what I've been trying to do. I've been nervous because we have to sing today. Um, but it also, like you're playing a game, you have to practice. You have to perfect your shot and get some feedback. I know some people have issues with positive physics and stuff like that, but one thing I like about it is that you get instant feedback. It's like shooting a free throw. You know if you win or not. And that's something that you can't get, you know, waiting for me a week later to, to check a homework assignment. You need that feedback and to perfect your voice. The other thing that's vital in this process is getting out of your comfort zone. We get stuck in safe places where we do things because we've always done them that way. But one of our jobs as teachers, one of your jobs as a friend, is to push people through areas that they, you wouldn't have otherwise. And so as a result, in the comfort zone, it's, it's too small for us to fulfill our voice. It's like the acoustics aren't very good. There's no microphone. But if you expand it, you start to hear different things. You also see that you are able to do things you wouldn't have done otherwise. I see myself as this kind of player on the, on the team, but the coach sees that you could do something else as well. Boom, you do that, you end up you know, being really good at that, and then you, you've seen that you, you see yourself a little bit different. I don't have to be that position, I could do something else. So that's the thing about getting out of your comfort zone. It allows you to conquer New, new worlds that you wouldn't have done otherwise. And great things really come from your comfort zone. All right. Some of you guys know about um, my love for Star Trek and, and the like. But one of the things about your comfort zone is that the comfort zone is what keeps you in bed in the morning, right? As you can see from our friend there. 
early morning practice be like, you know, um, if you want to get good at something, you have to stretch yourself. You have to do something that's not so easy. I've been able to do some, um, doing the bike in the morning, trying to deal with, you know, my, my gained weight and all this stuff for the past 25 years. But, I, you know, when I go to the gym, I see folks there six in the morning working on their shot, six in the morning working in the weight room, right? Because they're trying to perfect who they are. But the only way to get to those things is to go through, not around. Some people want shortcuts. If only I could take a pill and be really good at shooting, they would do it. And um, the thing is, is that there really isn't any good shortcuts in life. And so, you know, one of the things about that is that you have to be accountable to the things that are there. You reap what you sow. That's a principle. You get out what you put in. And sometimes it requires even acknowledging your mistakes. Um, a friend of mine from my church, he, he is a policeman, at least he was a policeman, and um, he accidentally cut someone off in his police car, okay? So he had to deal with that. How did he deal with that? He had to pull the person over. Can you imagine how they felt? They were like, what did I do? What did I do? I didn't do nothing. What? And so he pulls the person, he puts the sirens on, pulls the person over and says, I, I, so, you know, I, I, he tried to apologize. The woman was cursing at him <laughs> at first. And then he finally got her attention. I'm sorry, ma'am, I apologize. I cut you off. Once she saw that, that the policeman was actually apologizing, she got back in her, in her, in her seat and said, oh, it wasn't about me. And as a result, you know, she looked at him differently. But you understand, sometimes we going through, we don't, we don't, we, we have our own preconceived notions of what's going on. And sometimes we have to go out of our way to, um, to even apologize, to go through, as opposed to um, going around. Um, all right, so I'm gonna keep going. Now, the thing about all this is that we have to know our wolves. So we need to know our voice, but there are wolves attacking our voice all the time, saying, you don't sound good. You know, your voice is cracking, especially at this age, you know, your voice is gonna, some, some of you guys, you know, teenage thing, your voice isn't gonna be perfect. I won't, my voice isn't perfect. But the issue about this is that that's the process of, of this is that people will tell you you can't sing because your voice is cracking, and that's because, you know, you're just having a bad day. But you take that for, to heart, and you never sing again, and the world misses your voice, all right? So that's the thing. You gotta be careful of those, of those wolves. One of those wolves is mediocrity. People will say, you're okay just the way you are. You can get those Bs and Cs, and if you're trying your best, that's fine. But if you're not, that mediocrity is something that I, I will push you on, you know, and, you're, and you have people around you who will push you on that as well. That wouldn't happen in a team, oh, I'm just, especially a team that's varsity, you wanna try and win, you see somebody only giving a mediocre effort, you gonna push them. So watch out for those wolves. Another one is a comparison, it's the thief of joy. Teddy Roosevelt said that, and you see the picture here, Somebody always thinks that the other person's smarter or funnier, and the other one think, thinks the person's prettier or kinder. But one is awesome, and the other is also awesome. That's how we have to look at the world. And until we start to do that, it's always about comparison, and then we always look down upon ourselves or upon others, because sometimes we think we're better than those other folks. And, and, and that's also a problem. The other wolf I wanted to mention is, that, is the wolf of hopelessness. This one's important right now because we're dealing with a lot of stuff in our world that seem hopeless. Like how do you overcome this whole you know, Middle East crisis and stuff like that? Kids are dying in hospitals and people are being attacked by terrorists, it's awful. And so you know, I go back to a story and one of my favorite wolf fighters is a woman named Sojourner Truth. And she had to st stand, she stood up to a guy named Frederick Douglass. He was saying that we gotta do things by ourselves. We have to get out of slavery. These are both African-Americans, abol ab abolitionists, who were trying to overcome slavery. And she said, you know, you know, he said that we gotta do this ourselves. Nobody's gonna help us. And what her response to him was, is God dead? 
there is hope. We have somebody to help us. And that's why it's on her, on her headstone. And, but that's also the, th the challenge. If Once you become hopeless, you stop fighting. And this, I hate to tell you, our generation has left your generation with a lot to, to have to deal with. And so one of our goals is to make sure that, um, that you don't lose hope, that you keep fighting the fight, that some of us in our generation may have even given up. All right. Yellowstone. Here is a, a real quick video. It shows what happens when you have a shepherd, when you um, have someone who is looking out for you, when you're able to shepherd others, but also the part of this fight. Now, this, is a, this has a little bit of graphics in it, so if you don't want to watch, please don't. This is a wolf fighting a baby buffalo, baby bison, actually. Um, but the trick is, is that this bison was only like seven days old, but it knew enough to fight. It knew enough to fight as if its life depended on it, because it did. I appreciate it. What Rob talked about last, last um, on Monday was, you know, our lives are short. We can take care of what the lives that we have. And so that, that, this buffalo's gonna do that. It got separated because of, um, um, it, was, it went downstream and all this other stuff. The mom's looking for it. But I'm gonna just show you a little bit of the story and we'll go from there. Escape. Oh, baby. <laughs> But apparently, our calf is no ordinary calf. Hopelessly outmatched with the courage of innocence, he's not going down without a fight. And the inexperienced wolf flails. All right, because of time, let's move forward a little bit. Wonderful noise. There's a noise. Here comes the cavalry. The shepherd's coming. With an adult bison charging to the rescue. Look at our the calf. calf now turns on the wolf. It's attacking the wolf. Now, I show you this, but to the calf, the, the, the wolf is now scared of the calf because he has it back. And that's the thing I said, know your voice, know your wolves, know your shepherds. The shepherds are the ones who have your back, the ones who respect you, who, who love you, who will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, who will base it on their, their compassion and love. And so that's the thing that you have to understand is that not only do you need to connect to advisors and teachers, that people who get your back, your friends who get your back, but also you need to be that, that large bison for other folks and support them, all right? And so um, I gotta finish on this note. I want y'all to think about, know your shepherd, those things that got your back, who will lead you to green pastures. Um, Mr. Mr. Huntington talked about a you know, C.S. Lewis book called The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. There's this guy in the story who feels down upon himself because he messed up. And um, Aslan had to tell him, you doubt your value. Don't run from who you are. Be who you are. And that's what I want to leave you guys with. Go to those new pastures. Um, understand that your shepherd has a rod and a staff to comfort you and but also sometimes encourage you and correct you and that knock those wolves away but also do the same for others. And remember those wolves of mediocrity, comparison, and hopelessness. Do not let them quench your voice. Remember, you doubt your value. Do not run from who you are. Thank you very much.